Something strange happens when you look closely at the global AI race. While everyone's watching this battle for faster, smaller digital chips, a completely different story is unfolding, one that could honestly rewrite the rules of technology as we know them. Okay, let's get into it. So this is Jensen Huang. He's the CEO of NVIDIA, the company that, let's be honest, basically powers the entire AI revolution. And just a few weeks ago, he gets up on a stage and says this, not that China might win. He said it will win. I mean, that's a pretty shocking thing to hear from the guy whose company has a multi-trillion dollar empire built on the very GPUs everyone's fighting over. And that's the central mystery we're unpacking here. Why on earth would he say that? Well, the answer is kind of wild. While Washington was so focused on sanctions, researchers in Beijing were quietly solving a problem that Western science had given up on a hundred years ago. This isn't about copying our tech. It's about inventing a whole new way to think about computing. To really get what happened, we need to rewind the clock a bit. Because before we had this digital world of ones and zeros, humanity was actually going down a very different and, well, an ultimately flawed path to building a computer. Yeah, that path was analog computing. So instead of chopping up reality into these neat little bits, analog computers tried to process information as continuous signals, kind of like how nature works. But there was a fatal flaw. You can see it on the slide. Noise, drift, imprecision. Every single calculation would start out okay and just end up as total garbage. So digital one, hands down, it was reliable, it was predictable, and for a century, analog computing was just a dead end, a failed experiment, until now that is. And that brings us to the pivotal moment. On October 13th, 2025, researchers at Peking University published a paper that seemed to, you know, break the known laws of physics. They turned that failed experiment into the future of AI. What this really means is they solved the single biggest bottleneck in all of modern computing. Right now, on your computer, the data lives in one spot, memory, and it's processed in another, the processor. So data has to constantly shuttle back and forth. This new chip, it does both, right in the same place. The source used this great analogy. Imagine if your fridge and your stove were the same device. You just put the raw ingredients in and a cooked meal comes out without anything ever having to move. That's in-memory computing. So how'd they do it? They use this thing called resistive RAM or RRAM. Now think about this, instead of a simple on-off switch that gives you a zero or a one, RRAM works more like a dimmer switch. A single one of its memory cells can hold hundreds of different resistance levels, which means it stores way more information. So when an electrical current flows through, the chip just performs a massive number of calculations all at once, right where the data is sitting. No travel time, no bottleneck, it's gone. And the result of this new method is, well, it's just staggering. The researchers achieved what they call five orders of magnitude improvement in precision. That number you're looking at 100,000 times, that's how much more accurate their chip is than any analog computer ever built in all of history. They didn't just improve on an old idea, they totally reinvented it. Okay, so the crucial question is, how does it stack up against the best of the best right now? This table lays it out. It compares the lab results of this Peking University chip against the industry's gold standard, the NVIDIA H100. And what it found was a thousand times higher throughput, a hundred times better energy efficiency, and an accuracy that's right up there with high-end digital systems. Now look, these are just lab results for sure, but even if you get a fraction of that performance in the real world, that changes everything. But maybe the most crucial detail of all is how this chip was made. This isn't some theoretical thing that needs sci-fi factories to build. Nope. It was built using older commercial manufacturing processes. We're talking about the kind of technology the U.S. didn't even bother putting sanctions on because, well, they thought it was irrelevant. This next part is easy to miss, but it's where all this theory slams into reality. This breakthrough isn't just some cool paper for academics. It has these profound real-world consequences for the future of artificial intelligence. So what can you actually do with a chip like this? First off, true 6G networks. The math needed for that next-gen wireless is just too complex for current digital chips to handle in real time. This analog chip 
can. Second, hyper-efficient AI model training. The very core of training a model like GPT is exactly the kind of math these chips were born to do. So imagine training the next GPT in just days instead of months using 100 times less power. And finally, you get powerful AI on your everyday devices, your phone, your car, a medical sensor, all learning and adapting right there, locally, with no need for the cloud. And this brings us right back to Jensen Huang's warning. He said the AI race is really an energy race. It's not just about who has the fastest chip, it's about who can compute the most efficiently. And this, this is where China's strategic advantage becomes devastatingly clear. Let's just look at the energy equation here on this chart. Over in the West, AI data centers are straining power grids, and energy is quickly becoming the main bottleneck. Meanwhile, China is heavily subsidizing power for its tech firms. Okay, now, combine those subsidies with a brand new chip architecture that is 100 times more power efficient than a GPU. It's an advantage that digital systems physically cannot overcome. So what we're seeing isn't just a new chip, it's a fundamental divergence. It's a split in the entire philosophy of how to build the future of computing between the West and China. This really lays out the two different paths being taken. While Western companies are iterating on the designs we already have, you know, more transistors, bigger GPUs, China was forced by sanctions to invent entirely new paradigms. They're not just trying to catch up, they're trying to leapfrog the entire system. And what this new approach does is completely sidestep the West's technological chokeholds. This new chip doesn't need the world's most advanced 3 nanometer factories from TSMC. It doesn't need ASML's cutting-edge EUV machines. It neutralizes the sanctions by basically making them irrelevant. Let's be really clear here. The GPU isn't dead. Not by a long shot. It's still absolutely essential for graphics and tons of other tasks. But for the massive, massive calculations that form the very heart of artificial intelligence, its dominance is now facing a really serious challenge from these new analog and photonic architectures. This is the future of AI computation. Jensen Huang saw this coming. He warned the sanctions would only force China to innovate faster. And, well, it seems he was right. They rewrote the rules. So it leaves us with this final thought. For a hundred years, the smartest people in the world believed analog computing was impossible. It really makes you wonder, what else do we all think is impossible that we might be completely wrong about?